there is always spirits that are in this world. Demons, demonic forces in this world. And there are so many that are not aware of these unclean spirits. And many are under the influence of one of them or the other. And these unclean spirits and demons will enter into a person that has a spirit similar to theirs. Because they make a connection with you. And as spirits... We're spirits in a body. We search for out those that have a spirit like ours. We make that connection with them. So we're really no different than they are. Everyone is looking for that connection, to find someone that is like them. And that's what demons and unclean spirits do. They search out for a person that has a spirit similar to the spirit that they are of. There are many, many spirits that are moving about looking for a body, a house that they can take over. Because they cannot find rest without that body. Even God. In the book of Psalms, 132, verses 13 and 14, God prepared Zion, the church of the firstborn, from the dead, Colossians 1 and 18, with a body. God prepared a body even for himself because they find rest. It says God has chosen Zion for his habitation, for his place of rest. You see, that's why God built up the spiritual house that we fit together as pieces of a puzzle. He framed us according to his purpose, his plan, and his will. God is a spirit, and he prepared himself a body. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Where do you think he's going? He's going to prepare a body for you. Christ's body had to be raised first to prepare a body for the Old Testament saints. Because when they raised from the dead, they didn't pick up that same body. They didn't go back into that body. Because 1 Corinthians 15 tells us that the seed that goes into the ground and whenever it springs forth, it's not the image of the same seed that went into the body, that God prepared the body with. The seed that went into the ground, when it is grown, it is not the same image of that seed, is it? And that's what they're trying to tell us in the Word of God. Jesus went to prepare a place for us, and he went to prepare us as spirits a new body. When those Old Testament saints rose from the grave, they put on that body of Christ, the body that Jesus was in. He had to raise that body first. And what do we know by Lazarus? When Jesus called out the name Lazarus. The book of John tells us that the day is coming that the dead will hear his voice and live. So Jesus had to call out for Lazarus only. Because if Jesus would have said, Come forth, the dead would have been raised. Because they hear his voice and obey. Jesus went to prepare us a body. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 4. So God prepared a body for spirits. Hebrews 12, 22 and 23 tells us that in heaven there is an unnumberable company of angels. It is the church of the firstborn, the firstborn from the dead. All those Old Testament saints that raised with Christ are alive there. 
in Zion, in the church of the firstborn, where it is the spirits of just men. Well, those spirits have to have a body. And they're going to get a body. And it made me think about the angels in Hebrews 1 and 7 that said that God makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Christ is going away to prepare bodies. I can't imagine that they will receive a body also because they are spirits and flames of fire. And those spirits of angels and those ministers that are a flame of fire will receive a body. We know that. Because Jesus' eyes are a flame of fire. Showing that as a ministering spirit, that's in Revelations 1 and 14, that the, a ministering spirit, God prepared it a body. So if the angels are spirits, and the ministers are a flame of fire, and we see in the eyes of Christ is a flame of fire, and we know it will be in the seven churches, then God has made his ministers a flame of fire and prepared them a body. Because without a body, they cannot rest. You cannot work in the fleshly realm. How are you going to work in the earth, in the new heaven and the new earth, if you're just a spirit without a body? You can't find rest. And we know that God prepared rest. God rested on the seventh day. That means, the why, why did he rest on the seventh day from all his works? He had already prepared himself a body. And he called it Zion. Church of the firstborn from the dead. That's right, because the spirit needs a body. That was what he was using Adam and his wife for. That was the plan of God. Did he not say that they would be fruitful and multiply? That was the way that God was going to use the male and the female to prepare bodies for spirits in heaven. Spirits of just men. That's what he, that was his plan. And I don't think anybody be thinking about that, but it's true. He wanted them to prepare spirits, a body, a resting place, a house, a home. So, because Jesus has the piercing in his side, just like the piercing in the side of Adam, which gave birth, Christ will give birth. We know in the book of Revelation, 22 and 2, the tree of life is a her. We know in Ezekiel 47 and 12, that tree of life is a he. Male and female created he them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. God cannot replenish the earth without a body. Christ said in, that he's going to prepare a place for us. 2 Corinthians 5 tells us that if this earthly body of this tabernacle were dissolved, we'd have a house, uh, a building, made without hands, eternal in the heavens, because Christ went to prepare us a body. And that body is his own body. Here we go, church. Let me get back to the reason why I'm out here. A demon in an unclean spirit cannot say that Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. Matthew 8 and 28, we know that even the demon knew who Jesus Christ was, that he was the Son of God. And we know that a demon or anyone speaking by the power of the Holy Ghost cannot say Jesus is accursed. And in my walk with God, I have seen many possessed by demons and many with unclean spirits. And the worst spirit that I have seen is the suicidal spirit. It reminds me of a cut, a wound that is so deep that it cannot be healed. And I've seen it in so many. 
And this spirit goes right along with the spirit of addiction because they are trying to find release from this wound, this pain that is so deep that won't heal. And because these two spirits work together and there are warning signs and they're there. If you'll pay attention, listen to them and take them seriously. And it's always better to let them talk and you just listen to them. Because by talking, you don't know you can make things worse. Because they didn't heard everything you're going to say. They just need someone to listen to them. And don't forget, they have a wound that is so deep that they believe cannot be healed. And many hurt themselves as a release of the pain they are feeling in their mind, their body. Down deep within their soul, they feel this pain. And the last thing they want to hear is you trying to preach the gospel to them. Oh, my Lord, that's the worst thing to do because they don't want to hear that because that word is a sharp and powerful two-edged sword. And it pierces them. And they don't need another wound. They already have a wound that's so deep that they believe cannot be healed. I know, church, I've counseled with people that had thoughts of suicide, and I've seen this, this spirit upon them, and it's a spirit of torment. They cannot find peace. They cannot find rest, even though they're in a body. They cannot find that rest if they so desire. And they battle with this every day, it's a hell they feel like they cannot escape. They feel hopeless. They feel alone, rejected by everyone. And then they have this spirit adding worse to worse. Because that spirit entered into them because it made a connection with them. And they feel like no one will accept them for themselves, who they are. When, it, when someone is in a crisis like suicide, suicidal thoughts, under the influence of the spirit that has made a connection with this person will enter in them. Listen to me, church. I'm telling you, I know this to be the truth. It will enter into them and take as many spirits just like that spirit. You think it's taking other spirits with it that are different from this spirit? No. He's taking as many spirits that are just like himself to find that place of rest within that body of that person that has a spirit, a same spirit as they have. Remember the disciples that wanted the spirit to, ha they had the spirit of Elijah. Apparently John the Baptist has the spirit of Elijah also. And that spirit of Elijah wants to call down fire down from heaven to consume their enemies. Jesus said, you don't know what manner of spirit you're of. Because if they were of the spirit of the Lord, I hope somebody's listening to me because I'm preaching to somebody today. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus said, if they didn't know what manner of spirit they were of, because if they had the spirit of the Lord, they would know he did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. You see, you're not paying attention. You're reading the word of God and you're not listening to what the Spirit is saying unto the church. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. 
Jesus knew what manner of spirit they were of. And I have that gift also to be able to see what manner of spirit people are of. I've had that gift since I was 10 years old. And it's a gift that I certainly did not want, nor did I desire to have it. But nevertheless, I got it. Here we go, church. That spirit will only dwell in a body it feels comfortable with, that it made that connection with. And it will take as many like himself and make matters worse. The mind is powerful. Thoughts, imagination can kill you. My grandma used to tell me so many times. She said a spirit cannot hurt you. But it can make you hurt yourself. And I know that to be the truth. I hear many Christians that have shared with me over the years of their thoughts of hurting themselves. And I don't whip out scripture on them because there's a time and a place and a season for everything. And you got to know what season you're in. Because I have even talked to my oldest son that has had thoughts of suicide, and I've seen that spirit on him. At first, I deal with the spirit, taking authority over that unclean spirit to cause this spirit to leave that body, and they'll put up a fight because they are territorial demons that will literally lay claim on you. Many, you got to fast and pray to get out. Because they don't want to go. And in my walk with God and even dealing with my oldest son who had thoughts of suicide that would call me uh, with great depression and feel like he had a wound that could not be healed. And I learned the hard way. I, I tried to use scripture. I did. I'm telling you, but I didn't know until the Holy Spirit of God taught me how to talk to them. They don't want to hear you talk. Scriptures is not going to help them. They're not interested in scriptures. That sword pierces them, and the last thing they need is another wound that cannot be healed within them. So I just listen to him and allow him to talk. Because if you, you meet up with somebody that has that spirit of suicide, the more you talk, you'll only make it worse. Oh, my Lord, you will only make it worse. It's best just to listen to them. And beg them to get help. Because if you have thoughts of hurting yourself, you need to talk to someone that deals with this on a daily basis. Because, you see, it didn't just come from the spirit that made that connection with you. It came from the spirit within you. And that's a part of you that you don't know nothing about. Many have no idea who their spirit is and what manner of spirit they're of. Get with someone that can help you heal that wound. Because that wound has to be healed. It has to be healed. And I'm begging you, don't hurt yourself. Find a place that deals with this because this is no joking matter. It is real and many deal with it every day. Depression, oppression, they can't find peace I know a healer that can heal you that can give you peace heal your mind heal your body and that's my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ
That's the number one answer right there. Because there's no mountain, there's nothing too big, nothing impossible for God. Faith can move mountains. Don't listen to the devil. He is a liar. He hates mankind. Please get help. I'll pray for you. I'll lift up prayers of faith for you. Know that I love you. And whatever mountain that's in your way today and whatever you're dealing with right now, that is overwhelming you, there is help. And I love you. I am praying for you. And you can leave your prayer request right here. I will always stand in faith for you. Pray for you. You're not alone. You can always talk to me and there's nothing you can ever tell me that will cause me to not love you any longer. As a matter of fact, it'll make me love you that much more because I know you need help and I'm here to help you. I'll pray for you, stand in the gap for you, intercede for you, battle this enemy with you, for you, that's warring against you. Iron sharpens iron. Everything we suffer made us who we are today. Everything I've suffered and I have endured made me who I am today. And I'm going to share this too also. Unforgiveness. You see, my dad, I've shared things about my dad with the church many, many times of the cruelty of this man and uh, how he beat his children. This man would hit you with whatever he had in his hand. He did not care. And he would seem like he would beat you and didn't want to stop. That when he was through beating you, you literally had to put something on the wounds because you were bleeding. And this man thought he could break me. And he found out he couldn't. But I wasn't the only one he beat. He beat all of my brothers and sisters and my mother also. He would take a gun out of the cabinet, put one bullet in it, and put it to my mama's head every day and click that gun. While we screamed that he did not hurt our mama. But iron sharpens iron. I don't see myself as a victim And I hated this man with a passion. Don't think I didn't. I hated this man. And it took me years, years after his death in 2001. It took me about 14 years to forgive that man. It sure did. Because unforgiveness is a wound, a deep wound that I did not believe could be healed or I didn't want it to be healed. Because I would say to God, if I don't hear this man screaming out of the depths of hell, I will say to God, you are not a just and fair God. You watch this demon torment us and you did nothing. 
I was 14 years old when I said that to God. When all along God had a plan and a purpose and a will, but at that time I couldn't see it. I was so full of hate. I hated this man. I hated all men because I couldn't see anything good in none of them. I believed they were all the same. There was nothing good in them. I believed they should have took all the men and put them on an island all by themselves and kept them there. Because men, the cruelty of men, the things that men do. And it took the Holy Spirit of God working with me in a sweet little voice. He would encourage me every day to lay that burden down. That it was a wound so deep that I didn't believe could be healed. But today, I've been healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, I am healed. I forgave that man a long time ago. A long time ago. Because you see, there's a lot of people out there just like him. But they will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account. And I certainly will be a witness standing right there. This was a cruel and hateful man. But I don't see myself as a victim because I fought back. I used to tell my mama when he was beating her, fight back, woman. She said, he'll kill me. I said, he's killing you now. Would you not want to go down fighting? If I was going down, I'm going down fighting. And that's who I am today. And the Lord knows that about me. And he loves me. Because I am a woman that believes in fighting back. If I'm going down, I'm going to go down fighting. And that's the truth right there. But God healed me. There's a song that we sing in church that I love so much. And it's called, Look What the Lord Has Done. Praise God, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. And I'm going to praise his name. He says he's the same. So come on. Come on and praise his name. Look what the Lord has done. You see, that enemy tries everything to stop us. We're all afraid. But what I found out from the Holy Spirit of God is you can use that fear. Use that fear, even though you're afraid. A brave person will still move. They won't be paralyzed by fear. They'll be afraid, but they'll still take actions, even though they're afraid. That's me. I'm afraid. Don't think I'm not afraid. But I'll take actions. I certainly will. Because if I'm going down, I'm going down fighting. That's my motto. I'm not just going to stand there and take it. I am a fighter. And my mama used to say, we need to thank God you're a little woman. Because if you were bigger than what you are, I don't think we could hold you down. I'm mighty in God. Trust him today, church. Trust God to heal that wound that you believe is so deep. No matter what it is. I don't care what it is. Because everyone has a wound that is so deep. They believe that it cannot be healed. It's like an open sore. It's just a constant reminder of every day of what you have suffered, what you have endured. We're not victims, church. We're conquerors. 
We have conquered this enemy. Whatever he plotted and planned against us, God has turned it around for the good to those that love him. And we saw that those that attacked us fell into their own trap. Because that's what happened to him, my, my dad. He fell into his own trap. He lived a miserable life full of hate. He hated everyone, even himself. Even himself. Think on these things today, church. And if you know someone who's depressed, that's thinking of hurting themselves or is hurting themselves, please get help for that person. If you love them, get help for them before it's too late. Because once you start imagining something, the next thing you know, you're doing it. And I don't want anyone to hurt themselves, anyone to kill themselves, because you have a life to live. Life is precious. Do you not know how precious your life is to God? It's precious to me because I love you and you're not alone. You can always talk to me and I will listen. I promise you. Have a blessed and victorious day today. In Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray. And let the church say amen and amen. You have a blessed day. You're always on my heart and in my prayers. Keep me in yours. Have a blessed day, church, and know that I love you. You are precious to me. You see, that's why you found me. Because, you see, we're the same spirit. And you made that connection with me. I feel like i known you all my life, and you feel the same way about me, as if you've known me forever. That's how this works, church. God is good. He is so good. And he's never late. He is always on time. Amen? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is unchangeable. Have a blessed day, church.